So where do you start? Somebody comes here, let's say they have arthritis. You know, there's a variety of things that can be contributing to that. How do you know where to start? So we generally use herbs that are used all throughout the world. Uh, lemongrass, ginger, turmeric, I mentioned holy basil. These are plants that are consumed by um, indigenous people or people of, of Asian descent and, and culturally, they've been in these cultures for thousands and thousands of years. Um, they're very safe to use and, and just to, so you know, the side effects are rest and water, generally. Um, what I tell people is, you know, that's what most of our, our tea blends are cons consisted of, are those very basic herbs that we need in our lifestyle daily, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, when it comes to something like, like arthritis, I can't, I'm not in a place, I would need to go live with that person to know what it is that needs to change. And then even if I knew it, I couldn't change it. But the plants have the power to do that. How do they do that? Again, they're detoxing the body. They're alkalizing the body in real time. Ridding the body of acids. Right, that are that are causing the blockages, mm -hmm. and as the, as that happens, the body wakes up and 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 starts to attract other alkaline um, foods, relationships, places to live, careers or, or lifestyles. Um, so I point to the many blends that we have here, consisting of ginger and turmeric and lemongrass. Um, if there are specific issues, like we have. You know, a, a significant imbalance of hormones that I want to address. We have a, a blend like Women's Wellness that would address that. It has an herb uh, renowned in Ayurvedic medicine for balancing women's hormones called Vitex Agnus Castus or Chaseberry. It's an herb that we grow in, in abundance here. Um, it's also got some red raspberry in it. But it's the herbs working together the same way they work together in the garden, creating diverse soil is the same way they work in the body. What we're missing so much in our bodies is that diversity of vitamins and minerals. I mentioned the monocropping. Corn being the, you know, the ugliest of that monocropping. The soybean industry, the ugliest of the monocropping. But the monocropping is happening all over the planet. And that monocropping um, is what's creating the lack of vitamins and minerals in the diet. The, the absence of the backyard garden that no longer exists in the body. So what we've created here is that super diverse vitamins and minerals. We have over 70 different plants on the farm. Now they all consist of a different information and they focus on different aspects of the body. The roots are going to focus on that lowest region, the root chakra, and they're going to enliven and empower your intuition right, and your creativity and your libido, all those things that America's starved for, the Western world's completely starved for, the root medicine, mm -hmm. right, so the ginger, the turmeric, the ashwagandha. So I would, I would certainly, everyone needs more root medicine. You can't go wrong. And it's in every one of our teas and, and all of our, our other products. Um, beyond that, um, again, diversity, 60 different plants. Scientifically speaking, what makes the plants different scientifically, they're they consist of different vitamins and minerals, every plant. Mm -hmm. That's scientifically, spiritually, mentally, you know, physically, that's a whole different game of why, how the plants differ and how they'll also differ in relationship to each person. So we don't play doctor here. We'd prefer to give you a lifestyle tea filled with elixirs, herbal elixirs. Um, again, ginger, turmeric, lemongrass, basil, spinach um, and then we layer in homeopathic in small small quantities the more potent herbal medicine like valerian like chasteri like ashwagandha uh, papaya leaf a lot of the polynesian or tropical plants we do soursop noni these are powerful powerful plants um, they don't like acids these plants they chew them up and they spit them out and that's what the body is going to go through when you use and drink our teas. 
So how to get started? First sip, right? And with every sip, you will have progress. And it's not about the end goal. It's about the journey and making subtle progress. And that's what people, you know, ideally that's what people find comfort in, is that progress. The pain's not getting worse. I've figured out a way to make subtle progress. And then every day you chip away at that acid that's, that's clogging up your digestive tract. So that you can't, if you can't figure out what it is that's feeding, what's going to nourish you out there, as you chip away at your digestive tract and get rid of those clogs and those blockages, the intuition in your body is starting to, and your self-awareness is starting to come alive with every sip. You have days where you just need to be horizontal because you're in detox mode. Body's letting go. And then you have days where the superfood feels like you're ready to climb Mount Everest. And so it's teaching you this idea of longevity. So yeah, if, we, if, we're, if we're presently very, very healthy, how do, we, how do we also appreciate the health in terms of longevity? Taking care of our knees, our ankles, our feet, right? Making sure that our feet are gonna be as strong as our shoulders are when we're in our 70s and 80s, right? And how do we create lifestyles and jobs and, and, um, and support use our savings to support lifestyles that are going to keep us healthy. And the herbs teach that. So again, with every sip, with every cup, um, we, we have choices of, of using capsules and um, superfoods and, and all those things are excellent ways. And they're all, you know, we create different types of, of uh, mediums in, in order for you to take them, in order for us to compete with the outside world's lifestyles mm -hmm. but in the end there's nothing like tea drink culturally speaking having a cup of tea right sitting down and having a cup of tea and and drinking this cup of tea and and what they refer to in hawaii talking story um, that creates community and creates culture the tea is also very gentle in its effect. So when I drink tea, the body is, is ingesting that tea through the bloodstream holistically. When I eat a capsule, it goes straight to the liver. Mm -hmm. And then the gallbladder. And then you take it on through the intestines. And guess what? My digestive tract has been through it with the Western diet. I, the tea is gentle, it's infused. It hits my toe and my ear at the same time it hits my liver. So that's why I like tea. And it also is, is from a lifestyle standpoint, it replaces those gnarly drinks that are out there. And it's very convenient. We've, we've, we've hand fed dried herbs, add water, right? Warm water and add it to the dry herbs. And there's nothing more, you know, fluid and liquid than that. So you're talking about detox. I think that a lot of, there's a big, you know, craze around detoxing these days. And I think a lot of people kind of rush to get those like really strong detoxifying herbs. You're talking about detoxing using pretty mild gentle herbs in a format like a tea that's even you know, more mild than taking um, a juice or um, taking a capsule. How does, how does detoxification really work? How do these herbs, these gentle herbs, help you do that? So what's, another cool thing about tea is you can, you can dial it up or down, right? So people tell me, how much should I take? And I don't know you. How would I tell you how much to take? I don't know what time you're going to bed tonight. I don't know what you're going to eat. I don't know what time you got to wake up, how stressful your life is. So it's really important that, again, people take responsibility for their self-healing. Um, the tea allows, you know, you can brew it dark, you can brew it light, you can have six cups a day, you can have one cup a day. Um, my background, when I, when I first started drinking tea, I went deep. 
as you know, so many Westerners, you know, <laughs> charge, right? And uh, we're gonna detox. And what the teas do is, is ideally a detox will teach you a lot of lessons, right? You feel that toxicity coming out so that you don't do it again, right? It shouldn't be, oh, easy detox, you know? It should, I don't wanna say the word pain, because it's freeing in the end. Yeah. Um, it's pain as we know it, but maybe there's a new version of the word pain. You know, there's the idea that you can't feel pleasure and pain at the same time. This is it, right? Because you're releasing that toxin. Um, so again, the ability to, to use one of our more potent blends, like we have a purity blend that consists of herbs like papaya leaf and soursalt leaf. These are remedies in, in the Caribbean and, and tropics that they've used to release dengue fever. <laughs> and get rid of some of the gnarliest of viruses and, and toxicity and, and things that, you know, there's no other ways in which to get rid of dengue fever. Papaya leaf is the, um, the bullseye from what I understand. And using papaya leaf in our blends, we use it, again, in small kind, in our purity. But it would be the, the tea that I would tell people that had major issues, rel you know, cancer-like concerns. Now, for me, progress is everything. If you can, if you can shift to go the other direction, you don't, the cancer's being, being chopped at every day, that's all you care about. So if you know you're going in the right direction, that's the most important thing. Um, and then can you sustain it, right? So if you go into a big detox and you come out and you're chewing on burgers and fries the next day, that's not ideal. Mm -hmm. And one of my, you know, when I started, I, I did some juice cleanses and some other detoxes and that's what happened to me. Why? Because I didn't learn anything in the detox. I learned what my body felt like cleaner, but I didn't learn how to cook for myself or prepare food. I didn't know how to learn how to, where to go to get the food, you know, because I was just b buying juices from the juice place. But what the teas do and what these herbs do is they integrate into your lifestyle. And you're forced in real time to figure out what's, I have people call me all the time, you know, I'm, I'm breaking out. You know, that's the toxins coming out of the skin. Right? Why? Because theoretically they're so plugged up going the other way. Right? Ideally you're taking gentle trips to the bathroom. Yeah. But people, a lot of people don't necessarily want to wait for that. They want to do it quick. So they're guzzling tea or they're taking big helping of, of superfoods, turmeric and ginger. Um, and that's going to detox them this way. And then once it gets to the point where it's kind of blocked up that way, it's going to go out. The skin, fevers, that's the body... Um, release, uh, creating heat to um, release the toxicity. Mm -hmm. um, heat in that case is a good thing. It's keeping the body nice and warm and healthy, right? Because warmth is a good thing. If it gets cold, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, so many different varieties of ways in which people, and you could, you know, be the healthiest person, but the toxins are gonna teach you your lesson through, the, through your skin. Excuse me, that's how you're chosen to learn. And other people, and then you go through, you know, the different toxins like the dairy, that's the mucus. For me, that came out towards the end and it, it was all in here and it started flowing out of here and it didn't stop for a long time. Um, and so it was flowing out of, out of my nose and that was after a lot of the other toxins left the body through trips to the restroom. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the dairy, the mucus is going to come out a lot of times through the face and, and through these senses. Um, a lot of times your eyes will release toxicity, right? So you'll get burning sensations in the eyes. Um, but again, the best way is, in the gentlest way is now, so can you get on a path where you're drinking regularly or using herbs sustainably so that it's gentle and sustainable and that's a tough thing to do that's a balance right even for me it's tough to do i'll go up and down you know where i'll stay up late and use too much technology and then drink some tea and then the body says go lie down and i got a big meeting and I'll, or i gotta rush to the gardens and do something and i'm stressing myself out right and then the body wants you know then i find myself in a detox mode and again the rest is people come to me they want energy right They're, I want energy to live my life and, and it's like well most likely if you need if you if you're in dire need of energy 
you're lacking rest and, and hydration, most likely. So that requires, you know, you can't just start chugging water, right? Just the body doesn't, doesn't want it. It's not attracted to it. It doesn't know which water to get, what kind of water. So this is a process, mm -hmm. right? And again, as long as you find comfort in the progress of it all, then just stay on that path. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about the, the time it's taking and the goals and the end goal, but just find comfort in the subtle improvements and the subtle um, subtleties of the process. Because that in and of itself is the cure, right? That's the positive movement. That is the cure of all disease. Those, that subtle problem. It seems to me that even the most gentle of herbs sends a signal to your body that there's a new thing happening, that there's a new awareness happening. Is that process in itself somehow detoxifying? Does that start your body on a path toward, I guess, what could be considered to be detox? Because now your body's like, oh, okay, this is not no longer being polluted. This is now, you know, we're now going for more connection to nature. Is it? I guess what I'm getting at is, do you need to go after a really strong, strong detox herb, or just the idea of adding lemongrass to your diet can that start some sort of a subtle detoxification? Sure. I mean, it's so simple. You know, moringa, lemongrass, more ginger. Every, just like the toxicity, every little bit counts. The cheating, if you will. You know, you're only cheating yourself. Mm -hmm. the, the opposite's true too. Um, the pleasure pain I mentioned before, it could be looked at as all as a detox and it could also be looked at as an awakening, right? Releasing, as you release those blockages and those acid, acidic toxins, you're gaining um, communication and frequency and uh, circulation through the body. That circulation is what's tapped, you know, allowing you to open and find tools in your body that are relatively dormant. They say in Chinese medicine, uh, your Don Qian, you know, is that center. And that center is what's sleeping in 90 to 95% of Americans. Why is it sleeping? Because it's filled with mucus and carcinogens and um, toxicity. Mm -hmm. How do you awaken it? You remove that. That's what the ashwagandha does. That's how it creates, that's how it boosts libido because it's, it's removing the blockages. As it removes the blockages, it feeds and nourishes the libido. Make sense? Yeah. So it, it possesses a unique frequency of vitamins and minerals. And those vitamins or minerals, we love to create science, you know, vitamin E and vitamin K and magnesium and copper. But the truth is, if you create diverse gardens, trace and untraceable vitamins and minerals are in every plant. Gold, copper, silver, magnesium, they're all in there. Mm -hmm. Don't get lost in what I'm missing or what I'm not. And that's why I tell diversity of vitamins and minerals, diversity of herbs is how you treat almost every, every symptom is, is based on that diversity. So that, it's so critical. To not try and you know to try and tap yourself out of the science of it all and have comfort in the diversity because that's what creates immunity in the gardens so we have a, a garden filled with 60 70 different plants we don't have pesticides why because those gardens are creating their own immune system through their own diversity the pests come in they see the lemongrass they bounce off the lemongrass hit the allspice hit the comfrey, the cinnamon, and they're out of here, right? It's how the jungle protects itself from the pests. Why does the jungle thrive in and of itself? It thrives on diversity of vitamins and minerals. We are trying to take that jungle, mimic it, and send it to you all. And that's really what, um, what allows that immune system to build itself. And in the end, you know, you're doing so many things at once. As you're removing those toxins and detoxing, you're building your immune system up. In India, they, they put turmeric all over their skin. Why? As an immune booster. So the, the mosquitoes and the, and the mosquitoes that carry malaria won't. And for millions of more reasons that I don't even know. It's an emotional immunity too for people that are trying to get at their aura. 
right? They hold that turmeric on their skin as makeup. And they can't, these people can't, you know, the relationships can't mess with their aura. Mm -hmm. um, those are all part of the detox and then building up the immune system. All happens simultaneously, right? The self-awareness, raising the intuition. So as you're taking individual herbs, you're being reintroduced to new vitamins and minerals or introduced for the first time to these amazing vitamins and minerals. They're basically opening up or enlivening tools in the body that were dormant for probably since you were a child, right? Because you're born with all these tools. And that's what makes you so vibrant and glowing. And then as you consume and, and eat and are surrounded by an industrial complex of pollution, if you will, mm -hmm. um, those tools go dormant. They're still in there. They're in all of us. And using things like turmeric, people ask me, are you worried about the radiation? I look at that turmeric and it's thriving. Mm -hmm. So if I consume that turmeric, I'm gonna thrive and I don't even know about radiation because I'm using that, those, that plant medicine, the vitamins and minerals to send that radiation back where it came from, right? And it's, it happens in, in, in real time, physically, mentally, spiritually, um, and obviously, you know, power of the mind. You were talking about acidity before, and how acidity sort of is at the root of a lot of illness, if not all of illness. Stress is a, something that's very prevalent in our, in our world right now, and stress can lead, obviously, to acidity inside the body as well. What, how do you address stress with the work you do? And I guess, can you speak a little bit about, you know, the role that stress plays in, you know, our disease and getting better? So, you know, it's interesting people ask me what our biggest challenge is here. We have this beautiful garden, we have amazing herbalists and gardeners and practitioners. But then we have to meet capitalism with a product that capitalism can pay for, consume, and, and receive. Mm -hmm. And there's stress there. That's when the stress kicks in. Um, so how do we deal with it? Well, self-awareness is the first thing. You know, so the herbs are, are allowing you to, to realize what's causing stress. Herbs like Tulsi, raising awareness to certain relationships, certain lifestyles, um, careers that are happening and, and not denying it, not putting it under the rug, right? So much of modern medicine suppresses those acids, right? Suppresses that toxins. I mean, if you went to a doctor and told him you were sick and the root cause of your illness was your job, could he tell you that? If the root cause of your illness was because you had to wake up too early, you were surrounded by pollution, you were, you know, your boss was yelling at you, causing you depression all the time. Could he tell you it's your job that's causing the acidity in the body? And it's, again, it's not the direction, it's not directly the job, but it's everything that that job entails, right? The pollution that you're walking outside when you leave the building, the air conditioning, um, sitting where you're sitting, the, the lunch places that are around you, the conversation at lunch, that's the acid that's creating the disease. Um, what we do here is create the awareness so that you cannot, it's no longer able to be suppressed, right? The herbs unleash that. I've had people call me, but you know, then now this is happening. Now this is happening. What do I do? And it's like, just, you might want to back off a little bit, the herbs, but stay with them. Mm -hmm. Stay with them because you'll break through and you'll break through and you'll break through. It's a lifetime of breakthrough. One step forward, two steps back. Three steps back, four steps forward. It's, it's just like that. Mm -hmm. For me too, still. Because I'm dealing with my own, you know, systems and issues and patterns. So, um, in doing so, the stresses, again, the subtleties, it's not all going to be solved at once. The people that have larger, are more open in their lifestyle, so if you're working an eight hour a week job, your foods are all accounted for, you ain't getting out of your rhythm. If 
I, you know, there's no way you're going to come out of your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Well, those stresses are going to be hard to break. But if you're open in your life, I mean, specifically people that have, like, say, teachers that have summers off, right? they can choose what to do for two, three months. Start drinking herbal tea and practice breathing. There's going to be a, a, a huge opening to deal with those stresses and acknowledge them and no longer suppress them. Right? So that's the key is acknowledgement. And the herbs, again, will help you acknowledge them. So how, how do you think, uh, I guess scientifically and spiritually, your body and your mind are, is responding to these herbs? I mean, how, how do you take the herb and all of a sudden, you know, you said, you know, once you start drinking a tea, you now, you know, these, um, these stresses, the things in your lifestyle, let's say, that are causing your illness become a lot more amplified and you're able to actually pinpoint them and they're unignorable, you know, anymore. Um, how do you think that's working? I mean, how is that happening inside your body? How, you know, what, what is the effect the herb is having that's allowing you that clarity and that perspective, I guess, like that, that extra bit of like peripheral vision where you see the things that are having always be the things behind you that you can't quite get a look at. So taking responsibility for myself is, is being in my body, it's empowering, right? It's empowering because I can take on more responsibility and be everything I want to be in my life. Um, when you suppress and play the victim, you go into a place of, of numbness. Um, I'm, I'm 50 pounds overweight. I'm carrying tw two 25-pound dumbbells around. And the doctor tells me I need a knee replacement. <laughs> no, you need to let go of the dumbbells. Right? Drop them. So you need to drop 50 pounds. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, those knees are just going to be... That's just a symptom. It's your ankles, it's your toes, it's your feet, it's your shins, it's your femur. Right? It's all your whole... It's your hips. It's your whole body that's, that's being... Um, victimized if you will but if you take responsibility for it you drop the 50 pounds and you start lubricating your knee teaching also how to heal is a practice right so these herbs they don't just like you can't walk in here and say i have a sore throat and i give you ginger and we heal your sore throat it's a practice. That ginger is going to respond. You're going to respond so much better to that ginger if you're using it regularly. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Because that ginger is teaching you how to breathe. It's teaching you how to learn, use that breath to circulate prana, circulate energy through your body, as do all the other plants. As you do that, your awareness, your ability to take, again, responsibility for yourself in those areas. And it's empowering. I mean... At the beginning, it, it might be, you know, easy to throw your hands up and play the victim, because it's, it's, it's all you know how to do. But if you really think down the road where that's going to go, it's just going to get uglier and uglier because you're suppressing the real issue, which in this case was the 50 pounds, and there's no ignoring it. And that 50 pounds is holding so much toxicity that it could be, you know, like I mentioned before. So many people can diagnose that 50 pounds and give you so many different diseases, right? So the, the extra weight and toxicity that we hold in America is such a big, and the Western world is, is such a big part of that issue. Playing victim with that obesity, with that extra weight, as opposed to taking responsibility for it. Drinking, drinking tea, drink, using herbs, um, planting gardens, herbal, herbal gardens. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what's going to bring you closer to the planet and bring you closer to to being in your body and taking responsibility for yourself. So somebody watching this right now who wants to get started doesn't really know where to get started. Ideally with like a fresher, because I mean a lot of what you're, you're speaking about is not taking, you know, something that's dried and then a capsule, but actually, you know, having contact with an herb. 
Where would they start? What would you do if you're somebody? What would you suggest to someone who's watching that wants to start with an herb, doesn't know where, to, doesn't know where or what to start using? How would you get going? So the way I got started was it happened to be in the garden that I was staying at, and they grow all around on Kauai. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, they grow all around in the planet. I mean, there's plants everywhere. So the best way to be would be if your neighbor or your farmer's market grew herbs. Mm -hmm. And you could go and buy some live herbs. For example, mint, renowned for cooling, renowned for helping with all chest issues. Um, herbs like sage and rosemary, since the history of time, you know, the, the Roman Empire, that's what they use for, for birth, death, spiritual purposes, for healing disease. Those are their one number one and number two herbs. Sage, thyme, rosemary, those type of herbs. So we kind of look at them as as spices and how to spice up our Thanksgiving dinner. But if your neighbor has them or the farmer's market has them, use them in your, in your cooking, make tea out of them. Those are the easiest and most convenient way for this sustainable lifestyle to happen of, of using medicinal herbs as a culture. That's the foundation is, is us accessing, growing and accessing fresh herbal medicine grown locally. What we do here on Kauai is um, we grow herbs that are almost on steroids, if you will. I mean, these are, these are highly next level medicinal herbs because of the volcanic soil, the active ingredients, the vitamins and minerals, the uniqueness of this air, water, and light. This is a great way to, to get the system primed, right, is using herbs that you can source. It's also very convenient. I like to think that this will help Cat, you know, be a catalyst for more of these type of farms and, and herbal gardens to create, to be created. And they do exist locally. You'd be surprised. Northern California, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. These gardens exist. It's a question of us as communities supporting them, right? Seeking them out the way we seek out doctors and then using them and, and giving them the, the capital and the resources and the, the human and economic and financial resources to create medicine the way the pharmaceuticals do. And that's that's so critical. Um, so again, researching the source of where they're from. Um, I mentioned before, I was taking a lot of supplements. They were helping me. Mm -hmm. They were helping. But again, sourcing from the kind, from finding the herbs from the source is, is critical. Knowing how they're grown, knowing who they're grown by, um, where they're grown, and what, in, in the type of gardens that we do here, it's so important. Um, the medicine is created in the garden. There's, I, have, I have so much, um, I love my, my herbalists and my practitioners, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful for what they do. But the medicine is created by the plant, by, by the mother. Can you um, just speak a little bit more um, directly? You've already talked a lot about this, but um, I'd love to just jam on the idea of tea as being your favorite way to prepare herbs, and you know maybe just like a short you know intro to that and why, versus like a tincture or you know a pill. Why you feel you know that tea is really a great way to get started, and also just a great way to continue um, using herbal medicine. I love the sustainability and lifestyle, cultural lifestyle of tea. Subtle, gentle to the digestive tract as it infuses into the whole body. Us sitting and having a cup of tea is therapeutic in, its, in and of itself. Having a cup of tea by yourself is therapy. Um, again, the gentleness and then the ability to integrate it into your lifestyle so that it can be put in your fridge as iced tea, always in there, ready to go, convenient, competing with all the other drinks in the marketplace, that iced tea, um, simple to make, touching the, the loose tea, right? We serve, we make uh, and create loose leaf teas. So touching the plants is a humanizing thing. Um, all of those reasons I, I love tea. What role do you feel healthy body weight plays in overall health and being
the treatment of illness. So inflammation and to and tox inflammation is comprised of toxins. Those toxins are trying to make a home in the body. They're calling in their friends, like a polluted river would attract more pollution. The same way a polluted body is going to call. You are it's just like you can't eat one chip. Mm -hmm. Why can't you eat one chip? Because the acid is signaling out, chemically speaking, to go find its friend. Even if you just have one chip, its friends sit in that bag. And it's as you eat more chips, the signal gets stronger. Right? Now, the chips need to find a home in the body because you can't get them out. Water won't take them out. Certainly, the typical American diet won't take them out. So they've, those chips will go out and find friends. They'll find gluten. They'll find dairy. And then the body just gets further and further into this acidic space, attracting more and more acids. As the weight gets established and, and continues to, to be put on, the body goes into a, a dormant stage. There's depression sets in and, and, and the ability for the lack of, of, of signal to the center of your body. You, know, you see so many men right now with prostate issues or you know, couples having trouble fertilizing, right? Um, with fertility issues. Why? Because that lowest region is dormant and, and stuck and blocked. In most cases, you will see excess weight. If people were left to their own um, beings in the jungle or, or, you know, in the gardens, you know, you don't see people in, in, in the jungles in Africa. They, there's no excess weight on them. That excess weight is blocking their ability to use their center, use their intuition. Intuition is being lost. And so we're not our highest and best self. We're not doing what we can do. And, and, and that's all holistic in what we do every day, the decisions we make. So there's so many aspects to that extra weight that you put on. Um, it's going out and finding more weight to put on. And it's also, you're losing your intuition, you're losing your willpower, you're losing your, your ability to communicate with your, with your highest and best self. Like I mentioned, the, the prostate issues. You know, it's, instead of removing the prostate, let's remove all the blockages so that the prostate can breathe and we can nourish the prostate in real time. I mean, there's just no way around it. Vegetables, fruits and vegetables and herbs. Let's remove the toxins. Let's eat fruits and vegetables and herbs. Those herbs are going to create the foundation of attracting the fruits and vegetables. People ask, you know, you mentioned weight. You know, I, I had, in my 20s, my finance lifestyle, I was eating so much meat. You go into a meat restaurant or, and you see so many people get up from their dinner and they're holding their back. Ugh. Why? Because the meat's get, it's stuck. Anything that's hard to chew is hard to digest. Right? So if it's a dry piece of bread, mm -hmm. think about what your, what your liver's doing with that. You know, or if it's a tough piece of meat on your teeth, what's going to happen to your digestive tract with that piece of meat? And that piece of meat is going to slow your metabolism down. And it's going to take it over. That piece of meat in and of itself, you know, unless it's, you know, and I, I'm not looking to pass judgment on other ways of, of eating or living. And, and I believe in, in some, you know, I, people can do what they want with, with meat and certain animals. That's not my point here. Um, this is just for me. Um, that meat's going to go out and call other toxic, acidic foods in. And again, you can't just eat one chip. So yes, weight has, weight is the, ex excess weight is the cancer. I use that word interchangeably and I, I know the word cancer is a, I mean, it's an industry into of itself. Um, and it's also 
heartfelt in so many ways, and I, I don't mean to lighten that word, but the truth is, acid, a cancer, cancer cell is, con, is consists of acid. That's what a cancer cell consists of. So if you eat acid, you are theoretically feeding your cancer. And just like nothing is pristine on the planet, you know, we all have, you know, why feed a cancer cell? Do I have a cancer cell in my body? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. But maybe I might just don't feed it. Don't feed the cancer. And that excess weight is basically contrived of acidic toxins or, or cancer cells. What do you think the ideal diet is? for somebody who's on the plant healing path? It's a great question. Uh, I don't love the question. For me, I feel that I am kind of at my highest self when I'm eating a plant-based diet, for sure, for me. But to each their own. And you gotta really find out for yourself. You can't be told. You know, it's really a, a life of lessons. And, and you keep learning them as you go. And how many lessons do you want to learn the hard way? Um, as you take on more responsibility and you have family and people you need to um, do things for, you don't want to learn any more lessons like that because you let people down, not just yourself. Um, fruits and vegetables, herbs, fruits and vegetables, for me, are the ideal diet. Now, um, not all, not, it's not for everyone. Um, people living in, in cold weather climates, you know, ice fishing, um, hunting and, and storing meat in the, in the winter. And there's other ways to go. And I'm, you know, people use herbs to, you know, use herbs to find that out for yourself, to create awareness so that you can find out what's going to best serve you for your diet. In our culture, we have jobs. You, you run chainsaws. You 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 mine. We have we have industrial jobs, and those industrial jobs create different types of appetite. You know, a monk living in the mountains can exist on herbs, and breathe and drink water, and live that lifestyle. People that are mining ten hours a day or eight hours a day, they may need something else to die on. And that's where there's a lot of gray area. And I, you know, it's, it's not for me to pass judgment on others as to, because we, our culture isn't perfect. But we, but ideally we go in that direction because we, we've been there before and we've learned that this isn't working. And so now we realize the technology we have isn't all that. And the simple way is the better way. How do the local people in Kauai relate with plants? What are their views on the plant world? And how do those maybe differ from ours? I don't, I don't know. I know a little bit or I can assume some things. I'm sure they're disappointed. Um, Because we've kind of like, so you hear, you hear it on the radio, you hear it everywhere that we've poisoned. That we've poisoned their land. So, they understand so much more than we do. And uh, they're watching us do it, and we're also feeding it through the, the big box stores. You know, we're, we're bringing a lot of trash in and a lot of poison in the food. Um, they, I think, um, would do anything for a you know a better lifestyle of uh, of plants of where they came from. You know, but it's not so obvious of how to get it. So, um, 
they're, they understand the mana in plants and the mana in this earth, and they hold a lot of space. Like, I mean, I'm sure it exists in other cultures. I've been here for 10 years, and very small percentage of the population now is Hawaiian, and they hold this space, this incredible, powerful space of protecting this island and these islands. And I say protecting because they protect it with their education and they protect it with their exemplifying, you know, where they came from, you know, and they're doing their best to teach people um, about the plant and about how to take care of the island. And we're, I guess, learning as much as we can, you know, um, putting them up on a pedestal, giving them the mic is the key, right? You, you get on the radio and stuff, you can get tidbits. And it's amazing to hear some of them speak. So much knowledge from their past. Um, but if they were given the mic for real and we could all hear it, um, I, you know, they're, they're doing their best to protect what's here, but they have, you know, thousands of years of, of history of, and here we are, you know, building more roads, putting more concrete in, covering the, covering what feeds us with, with petroleum products, creating more trash. Um, th that's, you know, this is one of the, the frontiers of sustainability and we need to push that world back, right? We need to push that, that world that eats up the planet back and start to, to change that in real time. And it's happening. I mean, it's happening here on Kauai. It's happening in Hawaii. Um, and uh, yeah, just keep planting one seed at a time. This is kind of in the same vein, but how do you see herbalism and plant awareness as a means to re-empower native communities and also to reverse the damage that we're doing to the planet. You know, these plants are alive. I know in, you know, veganism, they talk about killing animals, but, you know, these plants give us, give us a lot and, and we trim them, we cut them. And in some cases, like in root medicine, we, we take them out of the ground and, and kill them, mm -hmm. you know? So um, connecting ourselves with that reality is important. Um, appreciating, and I, and I think, you know, the cultures, they know, they understand that. They understand the mana in these plants, the energy, the, the life in these plants that comes from the earth. And that as we take care of it, it will take care of us. It's that simple. But in practice, we didn't grow up like that, so none of us understand it. They do. They grew up in that way. So the, the more plants are a part of, our, of us, the more the... And the plants are, are doing the teaching. You know, we're, in Hawaiian culture, they didn't have a lot of written language. And they didn't have... You know, they did a lot of their teachings through music and dance. And it shows you what they thought of language right to skew reality um and it also can be inferred that they use the plants to teach because they are the you know the plants are so humbling when we first got here you know four acres i came in with this big ego of how i was going to build a medicine farm and i was franchising this medicine farm before i even put a plant in the ground i mean it was it was all over the world it was blowing it up and um and, and the jungle humbled me. It put shackles on my ankles and my feet and said, slow down and observe. And as I did that, I washed myself with these plants inside and out. Different plants, different day. Introduced to new plants. We grow different. Still to this, in this moment, I'm still being introduced to new plants. And as I am introduced to these new plants, new, the tools in my body are coming alive. And I'm being humbled as a result of that. And finding myself, you know, wanting to speak less and use the plants. You know, you ask me how do people get started with a cup of tea. The information that's in these plants is going to 
give them more information than I could tell them. You know, how did you learn all this? You'll know as much as I would if you drink, just keep drinking the tea. Because you'll learn about these plants. And I think the Hawaiians and, and other um, cultures would, would agree with, with that, that the plants are the teachers. You know, and, and the land is, is teaching us so much. And if we, can, if we can surround ourselves with more plants and surround ourselves with nature, it's inevitable that we take care of it.